Well, I know he could have got some other people to come up here and talk, but Mark trusted me to make sure to keep it short and sweet because we know Dad has a few words to say, right? <laughs> now, my name is Sean Veach, and it's an honor and privilege to be the one to introduce my father, Bob Veach. And I could talk to you a lot about the accomplishments that he's had, whether it's being a Pan Am Games gold medalist or the achievements he's had as a coach, but I'd like to talk more about him as a person. But before I do that, I want to make sure because behind every good coach is a good wife. And today is my mom's birthday. So can you all join me in saying happy birthday to Sheila? We won't sing. I won't go that far. And so, yes, I always joke I'm a principal at an elementary building. And I always tell my staff happy 28th birthday. But I didn't want to say that to my mom because then that would kind of get weird. You know, she's only 28. I'm up here. We didn't want to go down that road. But happy birthday to mom. And I want to tell a couple stories, too, about how Dad became, uh, you know, a Hall of Fame inductee here this year and also take the opportunity to apologize to Mom for all the things that we broke in the house over several of the wrestling matches that we had, all her favorite pretties that she would warn us, don't wrestle here, I don't want that broke, sorry about that. And the hood of your car, when Dad threw me on top of the hood of your car and we dented the hood of your car, too, really sorry about that one as well, that was a good wrestling match. But my favorite one of all was when we were wrestling out at Gun Lake at our cottage. You know, you know, father, son, we get into those wrestling matches. We're having a good time. We're pumbling. Dad ends up giving me a good little uppercut right to the nose. Well, I had a white shirt on, and we just keep wrestling because that's what wrestlers do. And now I have blood going all over my white shirt. As a good Samaritan goes walking by and sees their son filled with, or sees a boy filled with blood and proceeds to call the police. <laughs> The good part about that was we were at Gun Lake in uh, Barry County in Middleville, and it was the Middleville wrestling coaches that were the Marine Patrol that they came, and they just spectated and watched a little bit more of the event. So sorry for the stress that caused you too, Mom, when the police showed up when we were wrestling. And I also feel bad that Dad's retired now to all the officials. Uh, I know there might be a couple out here, because I've never saw a coach with such a gracious heart to want to help the officials so much is what dad would always do. And so the officials are going to have to work harder now because he's not going to help them call a takedown or help them call a stalling. So I feel bad for the officials too. But just a couple funny stories there to get us going. But I really wanted to talk about dad um, and who I believe he is as a person. And he's meant a lot to his community. He's had a lot of care for his kids. And he's just been committed to the sport of wrestling. And so in the community of Lakewood, Dad grew up there in Lake Odessa, came back to Lake Odessa, and coached there. He's always been at LACO, will always be at LACO, and has meant so much for that community. Dad's always invested himself with Mom as well to make sure to provide every opportunity for all the kids there in Lake Odessa. Um, in general, a uh, higher free and reduced uh, you know, lunch population, so he always wanted to make sure to bring opportunities for those kids to enjoy right in our own backyard for um, those opportunities that maybe they couldn't afford. Whether it was the fall harvest that they would put on or many other um, organizational events in the community, he did an amazing job, including he started a club soccer at the high school. Never saw him play soccer, never saw him coach soccer, but it wasn't about that. It was about making sure that the kids had the opportunity and there were kids there that wanted to play soccer. So he started a club soccer team, which is now a varsity sport there at Lego as well. But dad's always had to care for kids. I can remember growing up, having several wrestlers living in our house at several different times growing up. Whether it was a tough situation that the kids were a part of um, in their family, our door was always open to make sure that those kids were well taken care of. Dad became a dad to them. He taught them how to work hard, and he taught them how to be a respectful human being, something that lasts a legacy. But dad was always committed. He was committed to the sport, and I've never saw an individual work as hard as what dad has. And I can remember from a young boy, very young, going to Eaton Rapids High School and watching Lakewood wrestle against Eaton Rapids. And I couldn't go there just to watch. I was going there with a mission. Because I remember dad at a young age, probably five is what I really remember. He was like, you know what? It's not about being great at the start. It's about working hard to be great. And so I steal. And I was like, what do you mean you steal? 
He goes, I surround myself with the best people possible and I steal all their great talents. And he spoke so highly of Jack Provencial, who's here, who's also a Hall of Fame inductee. And he would tell me before we would go, watch him, watch what he says, watch what he does, watch what his wrestlers do. I wanna learn from that man. Jack, you'll never know how much you meant to dad. And dad continued to go when he would go down to Bedford. We'd have a yearly Bedford tournament because Bedford was, um, you know, still is just a top-notch program and he wanted to learn from them. And Tim from Dundee down there, he'd give me a task even at a young age before wrestling, watch those guys. They're the best, I wanna learn from them. And then dad would work hard. His lesson plans for teaching were not, I promise, as thorough as what they were for wrestling. But everything he planned out to the nth degree. I remember as a kid, we'd get the Lansing State Journal, we'd get the Grand Rapids Press every week, and on Sunday, we would look up all the results. And then we'd look at our lineup on who we were gonna wrestle, and we'd start talking. Who do we have to juggle? Where's the double weigh-ins gonna happen? And that started way back when I was a kid. But still to this day, what I'm so proud of dad about too are the systems that he created as a coach. He always talked about how important it was from the youth to the middle school all the way to the high school to have a system. And I was fortunate enough this year, our elementary school won a blue ribbon that I get to go celebrate here next week. And that was one of the things that I talked about were systems. And that's where I learned it from, was from dad, about building a system. He would always tell me it takes 10 years to build a program in one year to kill it. And so he always talked about making sure that you have a system for excellence. And so the hard working that he's put forth to this sport will always go on and last forever. And it's an honor and privilege to have wrestled for dad. It's an honor and privilege to be his son. And I'm thrilled to be the one to induct him here tonight as a Michigan Wrestling Association Hall of Fame, Bob Feach. <laughs> this, this is for all those years that he had the mic while he was coaching, while he was running a tournament, while he was calling matches to the mat and saying, Portland! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, I got to say, Sean asked me once about a week ago, he said, uh, are you the second or the third winningest coach in in Michigan right now? And I didn't even answer him. I just sent him a picture. Um, and he says, and how many years did you coach? And that's all we said. And you're going to hear me tonight talking about some of the things that he just said. So it's got to be genetic because he was, where he came from uh, just blew me away. And some of the things he said is like, couple of comments that I'm going to make tonight too, but uh, I was glad when Mark said we had eight minutes because when you get my age, you need that eight minutes at the urinal. It just doesn't happen that fast anymore. So, um, so I was glad when he gave us the eight minute warning, but uh, like Tony said, uh, you know, when you get so old, then uh, they just uh, feel sorry for you and make an accomplishment for you. So uh, I know what he's talking about. Um, I better put my glasses on or we'll be all done. And when you get my age, you got to put the glasses on also. Mike, you did great with no glasses. That's a that boy. Um, I'm not there yet. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, son. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, um, that The kind words. Uh, Sean has to go to church, I know, tomorrow, and uh, he'll need to go there after some of the things that he said nice about me. So. I always tell everybody, if you ever say anything nice about me, just make sure nobody ever hears you. Okay. First of all, I just do want to congratulate our special award winners, our other inductees. Uh, such a great honor to be here tonight and to earn this award. Um, before I talk about a little bit about me, I just want to... Norm Young, who was my wrestling coach, is the other inductee. Um, I contacted Mark uh, Holdren about getting Norm inducted and going through the process of uh, getting Norm inducted into the Michigan Wrestling Hall of Fame. 
Norm was a junior high coach or teacher, and he really didn't have a, um, a lot of contact. And it's tough to be a junior high uh, teacher and a, and a high school coach, especially in today's age. And so Norm had uh, um, a mediocre career, uh, didn't have a lot, had a couple state champions, but Norm was just a super guy. You couldn't ask uh, any more. And uh, he, he couldn't make it here. Norm is uh, 80 years old. He's in the 85-year-old 80, handball um, national tournament. So sad thing about Norm is he owned uh, the dispatch in, in Lansing. And that burnt to the ground uh, a week ago. Him and his brother owned that. So that's a, a bad thing for, for Norm. But Norm was uh, inducted in the Lansing State, uh, um, Lansing Sports Hall of Fame. He was a state champion in 56 and 57 for Sexton High School. Norm was a Big Ten champion, three-time for Michigan State. He was a team captain at Michigan State University. He was an NCAA national champion in 1961. He was third in the Olympic trials. Uh, in handball, which I played a lot of handball because that was my conditioning going to the state tournament when Norm was coaching. Uh, hey, let's go play some handball. We'll get you in shape. And uh, So I learned how to play handball, but Norm was a national champion handball player in, in 1958, 1991. He was a world champion handball player in, in uh, the uh, old division. And Norm started his career at, at Lakewood in 1962 we had a guy by the name of Dara Hartzler who did community ed, and he was stuck. We want wrestling to start, start teaching it, and Dara uh, had nothing, no knowledge at all about wrestling, and then all of a sudden Norm Young came to Lakewood for a phys ed job, and Dara went to our superintendent and said, hire that guy, I need that guy. And, and Norm coached at Lakewood uh, for 20 years. Um, he was given the head coaching position, and like I said, Norm was just uh, – he probably couldn't have came up and talked uh, anyways if he would have came. He's just not a people person, but you put him in the, in the handball court, he's just a great guy. But before I get started on me, I'd just like to introduce, uh, I'd like my coaches to stand up, all my assistant coaches that coach with me. My athletic directors are here tonight. Stand up, my athletic directors. Where's Mike? There he is. Uh, my club people, uh, come on, stand up. My friends, you might not want to stand up if you don't want to say friends, but uh, um, some of my wrestlers, my family, my sisters are back there. Stand up, sisters. Oh, come on, stand up. Jeez. My family, my children are here at the table here. And my wife right there, uh, like uh, Jim said, she'd be a Hall of Famer too. Um, I tell you, I, I tell everybody I've been blessed for 42 years. Uh, she, I've been blessed for 42 years. Uh, she hasn't been blessed for 42 years. <laughs> um, but like they said, you know, without the support from your wife and your family, uh, it can be a rough 40 years uh, of coaching. And there was always support. And like Sean said, we did have a lot of kids that had troubled homes that did live with us, and I never had to ask. I just brought them home, and they were always accepted. But just because of all of them is, again, like Jim said, the reason that I'm up here tonight. Mark Holdren, uh, I can't say enough about Mark. Um, I tell him every year how great of a job he does keeping the, doing this banquet and stuff, and then he does for the wrestling. But Mark told me, he says, uh, all right, you got 45 minutes. And I said, well, she's Mark. Uh, I timed it at 63. <laughs> um, so I got to get speeding up here. But I do want to thank you for this honor. It's, it, it is an honor. It's a blessing. Um, I just can't uh, tell you how much, you know, I'd come to this banquet for years. I'd actually sit back here. Mike Bloom, one of my wrestlers, I used to wrestle against at GRCC. I'd sit every year with him. And we just look at the list of all the great coaches. And I just sit there and say, yeah, he's a, he's a great coach. He, he, he's a great guy. I mean, he, ran, he runs a heck of a program. Jeez, what a great coach. And, and then finally I thought, you know, geez, it'd be nice to get on that list. And I thought, well, probably not going to. So I did like the movie stars did with their kids going to college. I just, I just paid the association off. I thought, heck. 
I'll get on there one way or another. But no, it's really a, an honor, and I'm blessed uh, uh, to receive this. But I started at Lakewood High School as a high schooler, and um, uh, I didn't. I don't want to tell you, but I was another Michael Jordan. I mean, I was a real deal on the basketball court, and even through that, I mean, in junior high, I had an old guy that darn near beat me to death. My science teacher with a tennis shoe, and. Um, but he always loved me because I, I was a great shooter. And I, so I, I go out of my freshman year and I was the first one that got cut. And so what a heart, ouch, that was a heartbreaker. Well then Coach Kimball over there and, and Norm Young, my two coaches at high school, um, they, uh, they came and talked to me and said, hey, how about coming out for wrestling? And I thought, heck yeah, what the heck? I got nothing to lose. That was a great choice from them. Uh, I set all sorts of team, all sorts of records my freshman year. I was outstanding, unbelievable. I think I was pinned the fastest of anybody in the state of Michigan that year. I think I was pinned the most of anybody in, in the state of Michigan that year. And I probably was pinned the most consecutive matches in a row that year. So that was outstanding. And I didn't understand that circle, you know, and all I knew was how to play football, so I'd hitting those uh, standing doubles, and we went over, I took three people over the uh, announcer stand, and I big roar and everything, I thought, hey, this is all right, but uh, um, I finally learned, and then uh, I, I thought that year, I think I was 0-30, uh, I had a total of five minutes on mat time. So I go up to Coach Kimball and Coach Young, I said, uh, hey, how'd that do? And like any good coach, they lied to me. They said, you are getting better. You are getting better. I thought, like, yeah, huh? I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And my sophomore year, I did. I ended up uh, um, 30 and 5 as a sophomore year. And um, I'm going to just move this. Ended up 30 and 5 as a sophomore year. And uh, um, was great. I thought, man, my, my career is starting. Um, and then uh, I finished my third in the state my senior year, so it was uh, it was a good move for me. I get my fat fingers here to work. Um, after high school, I wanted to continue in wrestling, um, but my my problem was is my grades weren't good. I was kind of those rebel uh, rebel high school that my science teacher did deserve to beat on. Uh, um, but uh, and I had my high school sweetheart, which I later uh, married. I went to uh, GRCC, um, Grand Rapids Junior College, under the direction of Charlie Wells back there and uh, the late Emil Caprera. I then transferred to Western Michigan under the late George Hobbs. Um, I, had a, I, I did have a successful college career. Um, never got any national awards. My sophomore year at the regional to qualify, I thought I had a shot at being a national placer and a shot at winning the JUCO and blew my knee out, ended that year. And then transferred to uh, Western and uh, had a great career there. I had one of the best teams Western ever had there. And uh, we had uh, went to the MAC tournament my senior year and I thought, well, I can win this and I can get to the NCAAs my senior year. Well. That didn't quite happen. Coach Hobbs was at the seating meeting and, well, the team started playing poker. And then all of a sudden I had this little cocky little 171-pound freshman from Mona Shores, little Ronnie Stibbets, great guy, guy. But I won the pot, started bringing it in. Well, he didn't even know how to play poker, but he thought he had it. And he pulled out his little buck knife, stabbed it in the table, and that ticked me right off. So I went chasing after Ronnie. <laughs> I was gonna pound him even though coach would have got mad. But as he went through the door, he slammed that big heavy steel door and like a dummy, I put my hand there to stop it. Broke all my fingers, lost all my fingernails that night. Coach Hobbs came back and what's going on? Coach, he goes, you're number one seed. I know. He looked at me, he goes, you'll be wrestling tomorrow. And I did. Ended up third in the back, and I didn't get the wild card, and um, so my career was over there at uh, at Western. But uh, the thing was that all my coaches were great mentors. 
That's what really directed me into getting into teaching and coaching. The positive impact that I got from those coaches, I just wanted to give to kids. And I also wanted to give back to Lakewood. Like Sean said, I was born and raised there and, and will die there. But, um, but I did feel, I felt that was my ministry in life was to give back to kids. When I came back to Lakewood, Norm retired and Gary moved into administration. I don't know if I ran them off or what, but uh, they, they, they left right away. So I was starting. I thought, man, a young guy, man, I know everything. Nobody can tell me nothing. Nobody can teach me nothing. Well, I, I learned real quick I was wrong. Um, and then, but what I did have, like Sean said, he, he, he said it, um, I had great coaches as mentors to follow. There are so many great coaches out there. And so I, as a, as I thought to myself, I got to take from them. And that's where I said, I, I got to steal from them. I got to steal everything I can. And even when they were talking to their kids, I would go up like a dummy and just stand there like, and just listen to how they talk to kids. I wanted to learn what some of these coaches did to make their programs good. Jack Provencial, outstanding. Bill Rainier from Bedford. Gary Rivers from Lowell. Tim Roberts from Dundee. John Baum from Belding. Tom Lehman from Middleville, Larry Stewart, even Mark Holder and I stole, you don't even know I stole stuff from him. Mm. I stole his line drills, put them right up on my wall after going over to his practices. I remember the kids looked at me and said, hey, Portland's got those. I said, they do? <laughs> but I was always learning and studying uh, those coaches. They didn't know it, but I was. Uh, Every one of them had a little bit of something that I, I, I could take and put into my program. But Jack was the best. He had, he, you know, don't get me wrong, Jack had some good kids. Don Whip, Jamie Richardson, Paul Coase, Jason Bowling. Um, and I'll be honest with you, we first came into the Capitol Circuit, you know, again, I knew everything, which I didn't, but, um, you know, I hated Jack. I hate to say it, but he, he would just sit there, he would just pound on us every year, he would control the match, he'd control the officials, he'd control the temple just drove me crazy. I mean, and finally one night, we were wrestling somebody else, and Bob, Bob Binge, the late Bob Binge, great official, he said, Jack is a great coach. His kids' heads are in it. He's a great technician. You need to learn from him. And I said, you know what? I do. Instead of hate the guy, I need to love the guy. I need to learn from him. He's state champs a year in and year out. He's mastered all aspects of the sport. I stole more from Jack, and I've never told Jack that, but I stole more from Jack. Even kids would, or people would come up and say, you guys wrestle like Eaton Rapids, and, and we did. Um, and he used a, the sandwich technique that I picked up, my wife would call it, you know, he, where he'd rip them, he'd build them, he'd, he'd compliment them, he'd rip them, and then he'd build them back up. And I learned that compliment from him and it paid off in my program. But he always let the kids know how, the, how, to, how they felt and how he felt about them. And that was something, that technique that I wanted to return because all my kids always know and always knew how I felt about them. They knew there was a care and a love for them. Then we became good friends um, and got to know Jack and, um, and he actually, Jack came down from Pentwater today, him and his wife, um, for my induction, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, but then I came off my high horse, and I had a few dads come, Theo Savage, Gary Updike, uh, Diane, our secretary's here, our treasurer, Al Ainsworth, wanting me to start a club program. We started our first club with 126 kids, um, and that was, a, that was a fun time. Then I went after my wife and parents to start learning how to run tournaments. And then I had uh, Jan, uh, Jan Jackson, who uh, was my first female manager at ninth grade. And 40 years later, she's still been with me. She's still helping us run our WAM program. And you know, you need people like that with the community and the people in the club in order to make things and make our program a special program. Um, and our work wasn't done, you know, our school was starting to boom. I, it was my job to PR it, and we did a lot of PR, and we used to 
run the whole halls full of banners and posters and run our bra breakfasts. We did the East-West Classic, the, you know, the Japan Exchange, just everything to make our kids feel good there at Lakewood. Then we got into our entertainment stuff at their meets and uh, my athletic director, Larry Hilton, was our announcer. And I tell you, you, you gotta have a great announcer. And Larry had his, his own amplifier, his own microphone. He rewired the whole gymnasium. Uh, and he could he could blow you out of there and he always made it the entertainment that we had um, and the excitement that we had so exciting in that atmosphere which just made it one more level higher for our kids um, and then we just again like Sean said the transition between our club our junior high and our high school and uh, we just knew that would get us to the top and I'll tell you I didn't know if for sure if it's harder to get to the top or if it's harder to stay on the top. But anyways, the success was starting there. The kids knew they were good. They started feeling proud to be on our wrestling program, which our school state where is a very highly basketball school. But I, I love the sport so much. Like Sean said, I was committed. Um, I wanted our school to be good and I wanted our state to be good. Uh, back when I first started, and some of you probably don't know, but before Bill Bump and before Mark Yule and before Dan Hutchins was Lonnie Lowry. Um, and he was ahead of the MHSA and I called him for several times. We met several times about bringing in the team state finals. And uh, Lonnie didn't actually bring it in. He was part of uh, getting it started. And it was actually Bill, Bill Bump who actually brought in our first team state finals. But um, anyways, uh, I, it just helped me feel good about building the program. And, and uh, with that, I've also started our WAM spring season um, that we run for junior high and high school just to keep the sport going. But some of my best memories were in our capital circuit. Brian Hyatt's over there from Jackson Northwest, uh, Jeff Pittman from Mason and Jack and Scott Warner. Um, those years and battles were unbelievable. Um, the camaraderie that we had, uh, you can never take away. It's just, it's just there embedded forever. Um, the blessings that I had as coaching my own son, um, that was, that was a blessing. Um, Sean ended up being an all-stater for me. Yeah, we had our special rides to school in the morning, our certain special conversations, uh, as a dad son has, but, um, that was, uh, that, that's something that only, uh, a dad and a coach can have with their son, but he, Sean ended up going to Caledonia and coaching. Um, he would have been a great coach. Hopefully someday he'll get back into it, but uh, he gives so much to kids right now, whether he's coaching or administration, it doesn't make any difference, but Caledonia came to Lakewood in our duels and everybody knew it was gonna come down to Lakewood, Caledonia, the beach against the beach. And, you know, so it was a big buzz going and, well, it, you know, it couldn't have be, uh, you know, 36-15 match, it had to go down to last match, tied duel, then it couldn't be a walk away last match, you know, it had to be overtime, you know, and everybody's going, and I think Sean finally uh, had his kid take the dive so dad could win and not get harassed, but uh, I appreciate that, son. Um, but all in all, in a nutshell, um, as a coach, you know, the success that I had was to build a total program and the key is stability. Um, you know, a coach that stays there for years, uh, as I did for 40 years, uh, it becomes a stability for parents to know it becomes a stability for the kids. And, and you gotta be open to coaches to learn. You gotta be able to steal from one another. If, if you can't, um, you're never gonna go anywhere. And like Sean said, I've always said it takes 10 years to build something and one year to, uh, to lose. Um, but yeah, get involved in your association, like Mark said. Um, get a relationship with other coaches in the state. Uh, be an ethical coach. When I retired, and when you retire, be the coach that just doesn't leave the program. Get a coach that'll take over your program, okay, so your program can continue for your kids. It's the greatest sport there is. I left my program with an all-stater of mine, Tony Armour. And my assistant, Bubba, who's been with me for 25 years. You know, I couldn't have left it to two better guys. And they've kept the program going to just where I left off. You know, as state champ last year, 
um, and they'll have another state champ this year. They're going to be contenders this year. And it's a feeling of success that you've had when you know you've left and the kids can just keep taking over. John Baum always said from Belding, Bob, it always comes out in the wash. And there's a lot of truth in that. But tonight I'd like to thank the association um, for this honor, the association for all they do for wrestling and the sport. Uh, I read a devotion today. I read a devotion uh, every day from an FCA Bible. I won't read it all to you, but I'll just give you a highlight on coaches, what it stood for. It says, coaches, when you walk in the dark, walk the same in the light. When you say yes, it's yes. When you say no, it's no. Be that leader. Be that inspiration for your athletes. Give them that trust and that honesty that you have to show them. Direct them in a positive way. And I guess if anything, that's that's the key. And that's what I tried to do at Lake with that, you know. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't chew, and I'm not saying anything, but that was what I didn't want to do because I never wanted to ever infringe on any of my kids. I always wanted them to feel welcome with me and to feel that they could trust with me. And I just wanted to give back to them. And they gave back to me more. Thank you.